How is everybody doing? Welcome to another edition of the Tezos Artcast. This is episode number six. Hope everybody's doing good out there. Uh, I'm enjoying my coffee. I got my one of my favorite shirts on, Tezos shirt. I need to pick up a Tez Tees uh, shirt. Got a special guest on today coming up here pretty soon, Jess Hewitt. And be live with us. I'm very excited. Hey, hey, hey. NF Trader, NFT Raider, <laughs> T Lit T. Good to see you guys. Hope everyone's well out there. Oh, what's new? Everybody having a good week? What's been going on here? Oh, everything's mellow. Um, these are my favorite days. I just get to kick back, look at some art. It's really nice. Nice change of pace after working in the service industry. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to be working, honestly. But, ah. Uh, so we got uh, right here, I just went ahead and put up uh, Fireflies, which is one of uh, one of Jess Hewitt's pieces. She's 
just got this just has this vibrant style it's just so cool i'm so stoked zay Fons wants to know if we watched the game of thrones uh i am one of the people the few people in the world that have never watched an episode of game of thrones not one not even one so uh i hear all the hot gossip uh, about it but <laughs> okay plus two <laughs> zay Looks like you're uh, you're the only one here. This is one of the few places you'll find where we did not watch Game of Thrones. But how was it? I have to know at least how was it good? I thought Game of Thrones was over. Maybe you're asking for another reason. I did not watch Game of Thrones, so. Um, <laughs> Happy Earth Day, by the way. Uh, where's my thing? Uh, Happy Earth Day. Yes. <laughs> I got to show that one. <laughs> That's good. Uh, yeah, Earth Day today. Very, very excited about Earth Day. Earth Day is a good thing. And uh, we're lucky to have this great platform to be on uh, that we can represent uh, clean NFTs. So that's really cool. Zay Fon says the last season was bad, but the show, show all as a whole, the, the, it was very good. Yes, this art is very cool. Very cool. Speaking of very cool, I want to introduce our guest. Let me just uh, get it. Art is very cool. Um, I'm going to bring Jess in right now. I'm going to add her to the stream. Jess, hello. Can you hear me? Hi there. I can hear you. Is the uh, music overpoweringly loud? No, it's fine. Oh, okay. Excellent. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Uh, how are you doing today? Good. How about you? Good. Good. Um, the weather is heating up out here in the desert. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So looking forward to looking forward to the summer 120 degrees, uh, but it's not here yet. So I have to wait. But, <laughs> it just snowed here yesterday and it's melting today and it'll probably be like that till the middle of may <laughs> oh man yeah is that up up in the mountains then yeah i'm in denver oh, okay i have uh, i have some family uh in in that area but i haven't ever been so it's it's my life mission to one day visit the stanley hotel Oh, from the uh, mining. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I've always been a big Stephen King fan, so that's always uh, top of my list. <laughs> and I, I like spooky stuff too, so, you know. Um, well, thank you for coming on. I'm excited to talk to you and uh, about all the cool stuff that you've been doing and are doing. Um, so can you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and um, yeah, just kind of, well, let me ask um, more specifically, I guess, to start, um, has, has art always played a role in your life? Have you always uh, been kind of toying in visual arts in one way or another uh, for a long time? Yeah, I'd say that's definitely true. Okay. <clears throat> but, um, I didn't start, uh, doing it professionally until I guess about a year ago. Okay. Yeah. What um, what kind of brought you into uh, like switching it from kind of something that you would always do to kind of being more pro professionally active? I guess. What's that transition like for for an <laughs> artist? I you know I guess. <laughs> well, I, you know it would always been my dream to be able to work on art full-time but just didn't seem 
financially feasible. Right. And uh, with the, the advent of NFTs, it, it's starting to seem like it may actually be, you know, a viable way for me to make money. So that's great. Absolutely. So, uh, so, and so the NFT space was kind of a game changer for you. Yeah, I would say so. And what what brought you into like the NFT space? Uh, how did you find cryptocurrency in general? I mean, were you? I noticed uh, from some of the projects and on your uh, Twitter feed, it says that you're a creative coder. So, right. Uh, have you been coding for a long time? Yeah. So uh, my parents had an Apple IIe when I was a kid, and I started learning to program on that. That was a long time ago, but. Nice. Uh, Old school. Yeah. Um, and basic. And at the time, you'd get like a book or magazine and you'd copy the program in, like type it in. <laughs> yeah. So I've been, I guess, programming since then off and on. That's that's wild. I, I do remember uh, I, we always had a computer in the house and... Um, yeah, from like floppy disks to the smaller, harder floppy disks. It's like they were floppy, but they're not floppy. Like right, they, they stopped floppy. being floppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember kind of just like graphics slowly changing and uh, uh, like first person shooters coming out, either like Doom and Wolfenstein 3D. Um, that, was a, that was a pretty cool transition uh, graphically. Uh, but, I, I, but I never got, you know what? I just, I never, even though I had those in my house all the time, um, I guess I kind of just took it for granted because it was always there and I never learned kind of the structure behind it. Um, a little bit when HTML came out, um, I built like a misfits fan page. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like misfit slash horror movie fan page when I was like 15. And that was like my, my last foray into, uh, into coding before kind of recently discovering it. But uh, the creative coding, um, did that play a big part in kind of discovering cryptocurrency and, and like NFTs or did they Sorry. link together seamlessly, I guess? I was interested in crypto back in, I want to say 2017. And I, I heard some, and then I sold it off, right? I was like right before the big crash in 2018. So I guess it was good timing. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I just uh, got interested again, like last year. And yeah, I would say that the, the technological aspect of it definitely is appealing. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I noticed, um, or I found Noise Deck, and one of the, okay. So one of the cool things about uh, like doing this stream and this show um, is I'm pretty much like everyone that I'm talking to and finding. I have almost no history behind or no connection to other than kind of like, I think you were one of the first people I saw on Twitter when I had started my uh, Twitter feed and I was just like, Oh my gosh, that is so cool. And <laughs> I'm like, bookmark, got to remember, uh, follow, rem remember this person. Um, and so even up to the point where I asked you to come on, I didn't realize that you kind of had all of these other things that you did. Uh, so I stumbled on noise deck a couple days after I asked you to come on the, the show and it's so cool. <laughs> um, so I don't know if, uh, would you, would you share some of like the functionality behind it? Um, maybe share for people who don't know in the chat what it is. Um, if you could share your screen, that'd be great. If not, I have it ready to, to go, but. Okay, sure. Uh. Let me see if I can do the screen share. <laughs> okay, cool. All I right. might have to take mine down. Let's see. Let me remove mine. Shoop. 
<clears throat> you got some smoke behind you going on, like little, uh, <clears throat> it's cool. a it's a humidifier. It's so <laughs> dry here in the winter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I imagine in Vegas it's also very dry. <laughs> Yeah, that's like one of the first things people will say is like, uh, oh, wait, let me see if I can. There we go. You might have. OK, there. Um, when people move out here, a lot of times it's like a year's worth of bloody noses because <laughs> <laughs> it's just automatically dried out. That's true. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so are you seeing that? Yes, there it is. Perfect. Okay. Let me add it here. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, cool. So this is kind of what you encounter when you uh, when you land on the page. And then for people that don't know, uh, noisedeck.app, uh, you can go to it. Um, so yeah, kind of what was the inspiration for this? How did this come together? Because you and uh, Alex yeah. uh, worked on this together? Well, so we both have been into generative art for a long time. And Alex has had a, a Python-based uh, noise generating bot called Noisemaker Bot for a long time. And I had been working on a shader-based uh, workflow, and we had always dreamed that there was some way for us to to come together and do what we were doing in the same little application space. So this was our kind of our merging of our two workflows. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, so that's, it's, it's really cool. I love that you're able to go to it and it's already just something there. It's you're not kind of presented with uh, the only like the layout of controls, uh, which is <laughs> what I'm used to getting uh, when I go to a, like even just like syn audio synthesizers and whatnot. It's like, oh my God, so many controls. What do I do? It's, it's, it's nice to drop onto a page where something's happening already. <laughs> right. Well, we want it to be really friendly. Like you can just randomize the settings and it's going to keep doing cool stuff. And it's, uh, you don't need to write code. You don't need to have a deep understanding of what is the math behind it to make interesting looking art. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of wanted to bring generative art to people who weren't comfortable writing code and make it, I don't know, easier for anyone to do it. Sure. And I'd say with uh, great success, because that's, uh, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. Oh, thank you. So uh, if you're new to it, then I rec recommend just uh, using this random button here until you get something that's kind of neat. And then you can kind of like tweak the settings. Like, I like this, but what if, you know, what if it was like that? <laughs> and, <Right. laughs> and so the general, the feel of it is um, there are two synthesizer modules here and here, and then a mixer that combines them. And then you can have one or two post-processing. OK. Yeah. And. We are all the time adding new, we have a big list of new modules that we want to add. So we're constantly kind of working on new ones and dropping them in. Awesome. Yeah. And then uh, you're able to, I mean, anybody can go here and make some kind of beautiful, amazing generative piece. And then you have some options for people to download them and, um, and save them and share them, so that's not just kind of uh, not just one off. You can actually pull these pull these down and and have them and share them, right? Right. So we have two versions. There's a free version and the pro version. The free version you can do a PNG or GIF export, and the pro version also has MP4. And nice. we're working on adding um, the ability to share settings, so you'll be able to share a URL 
somebody else can go to noise deck and see exactly what you were working on. Oh, wow. Cool. So that'll be neat. I guess I, that sounds like, so if you had the URL, it would drop you onto the page um, with whatever the person who gave you the link had worked on, right? Right. So you would see exactly what they saw when, when they were working on it. Yeah. And then in turn, you could tweak that. So you could essentially run like a chain piece, like almost like old school mail art where you're chaining things together and linking it. It's like, this is the evolution of a piece passed around between 10 different people uh, with that, with that kind of functionality, huh? Absolutely. That's a cool idea. And I hadn't, that hadn't really occurred to me, but yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> That's cool. Yeah. I love, and, and that, that, that allows for like some, uh, just really awesome uh, collaboration too. That's, that's another thing I think will be interesting with NFTs and what I, what I enjoy about the generative art that I'm seeing on it is, um, like interactive uh, pieces coming out and, you know, um, I think in general, a lot, some people miss out on the fact that, you know, they just kind of see like, oh, this is just like a monetized GIF or it's a monetized JPEG um, and that's all they kind of see. But when you get deeper into it, it's, you realize there's code behind the art. And so, you can have something that's, you know, simple, straightforward, like this is my photograph and it's linked to the blockchain. Um, but if you really wanted to, you could do all kinds of things because of the code that's, that's behind it. So that's, I think, something that a lot of people haven't really unboxed yet. Um, and it's going to be really cool to see where that goes, especially with projects like this. Like, this is so cool. Absolutely. And I think that the interactive nature is this is kind of like the, the first time in the history of art that you've really been able to interact with uh, art pieces in this way. And it'll be really interesting to see where that goes in the future. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I like that a lot. That's cool. That's like Cubist something or other. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Um, now, a piece like uh, Firefly, are you using um, different methods to create? Uh, how, how are you creating your um, the pieces that we see on your profile and whatnot? So I am pretty much using Noise Deck now. I have my own special build of it that has some uh, modules that are unique to my my style that, sure. that aren't, aren't in the public version. So. <laughs> But uh, right, right. an application, and got to keep a couple things close to the close to the vest, right? That's right. I feel like it's it's kind of like my signature. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, these are some of the pieces. Um, and for uh, our our viewers, um, Jess was gracious enough to mint this beautiful piece titled pulse the heart beats eternally is awesome i was i was checking the collection like beforehand I'm like oh just like seeing if it's uploaded like seeing, <laughs> you know seeing what's going on and i saw i'm like oh yeah good vibes on uh, on earth day for sure right <laughs> spreading that love that's right so thank you for that. Um, I'm excited to to give this out, um, and that is object four two two seven one. Um, you can email me at uh, here. I'm gonna put this up to collect this beautiful piece. Um, you can DM Tezos Artcast on Twitter or send me an email at sageandpine at protonmail.com. Um, and, then, and yeah, I'll send it, send it right to you. So, um, I did want to ask you, um, what is behind the rusty sniper label? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the borderlands games. 
Okay. And in um, Borderlands 1, one of the starting crappy weapons that they give you is a, a rusty sniper. <laughs> and, kind of like, and I also used to be in a game development. So uh, I don't know, just the, it, having like a crappy starting weapon for a gamer handle where people are trying to seem like a tough, okay. seem kind of right. funny. So. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think I don't think I ever got any other weapons in that game. I, 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 was, not very, I was not very good at it. So. <laughs> but, okay, that's cool. That's cool. So, um, uh, you said um, <laughs> you were in a game development as well, right? Um, uh, what were some of the games that you worked on um, or just, you know, some, some of your projects uh, that, that you worked on in the past? Uh, so uh, my partner, Alex, had a game called Zigfrack, which was a, a space RPG that I did some some development on, but it was it was mostly her project. It was on Steam for a few years and we took it down. What was it? Uh, for Four years ago, so <laughs> okay. yeah, but that was cool. And then um, I was working on a, a kind of robot first-person shooter game that didn't uh, ever make it to market. So, uh, do you ever? I, I've seen um, I've seen some game development like game jams. Do you ever uh, participate in any of those, or have you in the past? Uh... I have, and I really enjoy doing it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's really um, satisfying to get something out over the course of a weekend or something because game development normally takes a long time and a lot of effort. So to have it, to see the, the fruit of your efforts that rapidly is like really satisfying. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm sure. I, I know... Um, I've seen a couple of different um, jams and I wanted to participate, but it's like from the opposite side. It's like what could take someone a weekend <laughs> take me 10 years just to like flesh out the bones of, you know, it's like, <laughs> but it's, I, but I, it's one of those things I follow. Like I'll, I'll, I'll check in on them and I'm like, you know, one day I'll have the, the chops to, to put something together. Uh, I do a little bit of Python programming, but it's, relatively new to me um over the last year and whatnot so i'm still very much grasping the fundamentals trying to um wrap my head around thinking in that uh thinking like a programmer or you know uh but it's but it's really it's it's quite a learning experience because when you start to see um how code is woven into so many different aspects of life and kind of what we consume in the world. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. So, uh, and then creatively to see stuff like it's, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> so I would like to bring my partner in if you don't mind. Oh yes, please. <laughs> please. She's, she's coming. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Pull up a chair. <laughs> so this is Alex. Oh. Alex, make yourself at home. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good. How's it going? Good. Welcome to the Tezos Art Cast. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Happy just... to have you on. Um, th this is so. I, I think. I saw uh, you're one of the two brain cells, <laughs> right? Right. That's <laughs> we're, we're sharing half of one. So. <laughs> okay, sharing half a brain cell. <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome. And so you've had a lot to do. Um, you've been working together for a long time. Um, been together for a long time. Yeah. Uh, all of the above. All of the above. Yeah, we, <laughs> um, yeah, we've been together a really long time. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> and um, being able to do creative stuff together is just, just you know, Amazing. the latest evolution of our relationship. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you're great. Well, I mean, I think that's uh, like especially when you're in a relationship, uh, being able to either like create together or inspire each other, like it's huge to to the creative process. Like, um, it is my late, my wife. Uh, she doesn't consider herself an artist. Um, but she she has these like brilliant flashes of like creativity where you know she'll she won't write any poetry and then she'll just kind of be moved one day to like write something and it's so sweet but it's like really good and i'm like you know i'll struggle to write a thousand different things and maybe like one of them i'm kind of okay with but uh but she 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 brings that out of me that um she she helps encourage me uh, to keep going, and you know, so having that, having that uh, sim symbiosis uh, can really be great, and it shows. I mean, look at this, uh, look at this art. <laughs> yeah, uh, our styles mesh really well, and um, we're always riffing off of each other. It's it's great. So, um, what uh, what's your background? Um, were you also um, coming up with the Apple uh, in your childhood and uh, coding from basic or, or what? Oh, you nailed it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I grew up with, uh, with an Apple II and um, I learned how to do graphic stuff when I was pretty young. Like, of course, back then it was really different. I was using like Apple logo and basic and uh, I guess I just never stopped. The technology got way better. Right, right, yeah. At one point in second grade, I was giving a, a live graphics coding demo to my class. Um, the only computer in the entire school that had a color monitor, so. <laughs> Whoa, nice. That's awesome. Do you, uh, do you two ever, um, have you participated in like uh, giving, like doing workshops or anything? Um, kind of sharing this love of code that you guys have? Uh, um, we really haven't, no. But that might be fun to explore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I think especially uh, right now, there's there's a big uh, desire for it and need for, you know, people who are curious about what's going on. And, um, and I, well, I honestly, I think this noise deck um, is a great introduction for people uh, to see kind of what's capable uh, with the generative art. Yeah, I've um, I thought about that. I thought that it would be cool to like um, have kind of a tutorial or even a series of tutorials showing how to do really specific stuff, how to recreate certain looks. Yeah. Um, or even just, you know, talking about what's going on under the hood a little bit, um, just like kind of a, high level intro to noise and how we're using it. Right. But yeah, absolutely. So far we haven't done anything like that. So. <laughs> well, I'm sure, I mean, it looks like you've got your hands full anyway, uh, you know, with, with all the projects and whatnot. Is there anything um, that you, that you guys are working on um, that hasn't been uh, shown to the world yet uh, that you're excited about or? <laughs> Um, well, um, we do have some stuff cooking with noise deck. That's kind of exciting. Oh, yeah. Um, just mentioned the shareable settings. That's yes. going to just be a, that, that's going to be like, how did we live without it? Um, mm. right. Like if we're like in the future at some point rewatching this interview, we'll be like, wow, we didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, there's a rewrite that Jess has been working on that's um, pretty exciting. It really makes the code like leaner and cleaner and um, it gives us like a, a stable foundation to work with. And that kind of underpins a bunch of plans that we have for, for the project. Like we'd like to make it easier for people to collaborate with us. Um, right. we, we've had 
a number of requests of people who are just like, let me touch the code. Like, um, so, um, hopefully we will uh, be able to work with those guys. Cause we want to, we want to be, you know, collaborative, but at the same time, it is kind of like our, our sauce, like, uh, right. So we're, we're on one hand kind of, kind of defensive of it because we think it's, it's really unique and really valuable. And at the same time, we just want to share it with the world and we want everyone in the world to be able to make noise with each other. So there we go. There we go. I like that. That, that could be, that could be a tagline. We just yeah. want everyone to make noise uh, with each other. Or, or by themselves, just, just make some noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bang up um, hands in your kitchen. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Make a joyful noise. Like, whatever it is, just just make make the noise. Uh, I Yeah, I like that I looked at the, uh, the pro version, or the, um, I like that you guys have it set up where you can do, um, kind of an annual uh, subscription where it's like 18 bucks, you get a year, check it out, or um, just like go all in uh, for a little bit more. Um, I think that's a really cool model. Um, yeah, it's kind of like the old TiVo model where you could get get lifetime service with your box. <laughs> uh, but uh, we don't know if we're gonna keep doing the lifetime service thing even though it does seem to be quite popular and given the choice between like an $18 yearly thing or like 40 bucks up front, everyone's just like, here's $40. Never ask for me to give you money again. Like, um, so right, right. pretty distasteful. Uh, so I don't know. Um, our, our concern, I guess, is we've got, recurring costs like we've got a we, we have hosting and uh just development costs and sure. cost of living uh, <laughs> so uh at some point we're going to be like hmm, how do we keep making money out of it right now we're just like how do we make money from this at all but, uh, <laughs> right right but yeah you got you definitely uh you want to look long term and and do something that's sustainable because uh, there is a lot of value in what you're doing and, you know, be, being already just, again, being able to have um, the noisemaker, the noise deck, like, drop into it and be so intuitive is um, really just, again, super valuable. So I think, yeah, I think going for a subscription style, uh, something sustainable is definitely, yeah. Well, there's it's all that worth it is what I'm saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. We hope to like get it out there over so far. We haven't done any marketing or really any kind of promotion of it at all. It's just like limited to our little Twitter sphere of handful of people. Um, sure. So I guess um, at some point we're going to make some kind of a push and right. uh, to try to, trying to like i don't know make make the world aware of it yeah well keep me in the loop because i'll be happy to share more about whatever it is uh y'all are doing with it um, cool cool um i go ahead oh uh i was gonna say one of the other things we're kind of excited about is um the interactive nfts yes. so on hick at nunk you can actually publish a little iframe that's got like uh, whatever you want in there, a, a canvas or, or whatever you can do with HTML pretty much. And uh, with a few restrictions, obviously you can't, <laughs> it's kind of like sandboxed in, you can't ask for files on the internet or whatever, so. Right. Uh, but uh, we've, we've published a few collectible, like editions of a tiny version of Noise Deck that we um, hope people will collect. Um, we think it's pretty cool. We have, we're gonna try to do one of those every week. We're not every week, eventually, obviously, we're gonna run out of modules. But, uh, um, we wanna get those out there and have like a, a cool set of interactive collectibles for people to pick up. Nice. Now, have, um, I was gonna say, it again, it kind of makes me, gets me thinking uh, with like subscription models and stuff. Um, 
I, I think it would be, I love talking about this stuff because it gets me excited about new ideas. Uh, but sure. I thought of, you know, again, thinking of like subscription stuff. Um, if, if artists had a subscription model uh, for their NFTs where, um, yes, you do have regular releases, but again, for subscribers, you know, um, at gold level, you're guaranteed like one unique U NFT uh, a month or, you know, uh, some tier system like that might be uh, something cool to for artists to start bringing in to, to kind of their, uh, their daily workflow or whatever, or including that in, you know, a noise deck subscription, like to get exclusive uh, NFTs once a month or whatever it is. That would, that could be a, a, some of that exclusive content that that subscription model can provide it. Um, yeah, that is a good idea. That is. Um, and that would be, yeah, great for people who have a Patreon or whatever to um, just have some NFTs in their wallet and kick them out to subscribers. I think probably we'll see um, it, it seems like the ability of artists to just like give out these tokens directly is really powerful. And we'll probably s see more of that in the future. Like mm -hmm. instead of having to go to a portal like Hick at Nunk or something, I mean, Hick at Nunk's awesome, but um, the artists have the ability to just like have these tokens in their wallets and they can just, you know, shoot them out to their subscribers or whatever. That's a good idea. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that's, uh, I know I've talked to a couple people where, um, you know, you start to get concerned because the, the, one of the big parts of the most empowering part of, um, cryptocurrency is being able to have that ownership and control that ownership, um, and do with it what you will. Um, and when you get third parties involved or managers involved, um, I think that there's a place for helping artists get to independence. So that's like one third party aspect that I think is reasonable as long as independence is the goal. But, um, I think a lot of people are coming into the space and there's a lot of money going around. And anytime there's a lot of money going around, it's like, how can I be a middleman and, capitalize on it so i think it's it's important to bring that up in conversation a lot so that artists understand that um this isn't like the other model like this is something new where you can remain independent um and try and give give people those tools to stay independent and like you said the trading is really powerful uh trading tokens directly it's, yes. yeah it is so Mm. Okay. Possible here. <laughs> I, I love the uh by the way i just wanted to say i love the uh fire and water uh aspect of your guys' hair <laughs> really? i don't know if uh, that is intentional or if that's like a personality uh uh direct, direct, we kind direct of, reflection of your fire and water <laughs> i think we just colors i was blue and purple for a while and just had the kind of a richer red color going on and we mine's, just kind of flipped. Mine's different like every two weeks, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, it, well, is there anything, uh, oh, I did want to ask. Uh, okay. Can I ask about the I Ching app? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I saw the I Ching. Um, what inspired you to uh, put that together? And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the question, I guess. Well, uh, when I was younger, I was a big fan of Philip K. Dick. Oh, and yeah. So he's got a book, The Man in the High Castle. And I guess to write that book, he used the, the I Ching to guide every aspect of the development of it. And I thought that was a really cool idea. So I've always been kind of fascinated by, by it as a, and I guess it's not, it's not quite a fortune telling device, but more like getting advice from a really wise person. <laughs> sure. Okay. Right. Mm. Uh, 
So yeah, that inspired that. And I'm actually thinking about making that into a interactive NFT so you could do readings with it. That's a cool idea. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Do you have do you have the coins with you? Do you have coins? They're they might be in somewhere. storage. They're in, they're yeah. in storage. <laughs> we I just, was gonna say maybe we could do a quick reading. Uh, we did but, we, <laughs> what uh, October and a lot of our stuff still hasn't made it here. It's in <laughs> <laughs> the joys of moving right <laughs> <laughs> um so and so the this particular um uh site is kind of a collection of all of the writing and um um it's it so it this basically is kind of like a translation of um in as opposed to having the book a book with you uh, you can re reference everything from here. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. That's a cool story about uh, Philip K. Dick. I did not know that about uh, Man in the High Castle. It's one of the few uh, Philip K. Dick works that I've not read. Uh, <laughs> it's very different for him. <laughs> yeah, I I love uh, I love his stuff. So he's just so out there as a Great. person, <laughs> human, and wonderful. So. Uh, but yeah, very. Um, I I think I started I started it, and it was yeah, it was very different. So I wasn't in the place to to tackle it. I was expecting something else, and I started to read it, and I went another way. But uh, I'll have to come back to it. I do circle back to books sometimes because you know sometimes it's just not just not the right time to be reading a certain book. Right, but, right. Yeah, that one's hard in the current <laughs> climate. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, my my dad recommended I check out the uh, the show um, uh, version. I don't. I I have not uh, got gotten through that either. But yeah, the miniseries is it was well done. Yeah, pretty well done. It's they a, they like, tend to not do well with adaptations of his books. I find, but <laughs> yeah, and that's a hard one too. Right. How do you even start? Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty good. worth watch. Hmm. Right. Um, are you, are you uh, both inspired by sci-fi? Do you both uh, enjoy sci-fi in, as in general? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we used to. Um, we don't watch a lot of TV these days, but uh, there was kind of like this golden age of sci-fi when you could like on Fridays, like there was Sci-Fi Friday on the Sci-Fi Channel. Like, you could just like just just chill out for a few hours and watch your favorite shows with, with friends or whatever. And, you know, they had like, they would show Stargate and they would show Farscape and like back to back, all this great stuff. And um, yeah, yeah, we, we love sci-fi. We do. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sci-fi is awesome. Um, and it's got a lot to show about. Uh, I, I, I think sci-fi is so cool just because there's a lot of like pr kind of prophetic uh, things in the writing and the shows. Like it's very like life lesson, like warnings. Uh, so Earth Day to be talking about sci-fi, I think is important because, you know, if we, we should be more responsible for our planet and, uh, and, and the way that we treat it. And Definitely. yeah, so happy Earth Day. Happy, happy Earth Day. Day. Yeah, sci-fi um, shines a light on like the human experience and our place on Earth, and it like it provides a safe place to talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I, I and yeah, and seeing uh, Tezos NFTs, um, I don't, I don't think proof of stake uh, like blockchains ever started out as a you know low energy solution at their heart or like at their start but it's become you know kind of a a rally and uh you know calling card of tezos to be clean you know clean nfts um and i think it's you know it's become more and more important as uh energy consumption of these larger blockchains is, uh, oh, there we go my my head popped off almost there <laughs> 
Uh, it's dangerous having headphones and speaking with your hands a lot. Very, I'm very ninja-like. Uh, I, I have the, uh, I have the movements, just not the grace. Uh, anyway, <laughs> clean NFTs, Earth Day, it's good. <laughs> um, did you, uh, are, Alex? Are you also um, minting some NFTs? Here and there, um, I've kind of uh, tested the waters a little bit. Yeah. I've got uh, a few on Hiccup Nunk. And uh, I think the only one I actually have for sale right now is uh, Cheapy. It's like 0 0.01 tests. <laughs> and they're still like, they're still like 90, 80, 90, 80. 80 or 90. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pick, pick one up. Uh, it's like six cents. Well, well, now it's like four cents because everything's down right now. Right, it's a bargain. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> and I, I went with 0 0.01 cents instead of absolutely free because we've seen, you know, some people aren't aren't playing by the rules and they'll just take the whole stack for themselves because they're like that. But yeah, I think we were talking to, uh, or we were talking to. Uh, Martin, who goes by Crypt Teams, uh, yes, uh, last week uh, about some of his stuff, and he was mentioning uh, bots are a big problem, uh, yeah. where people have these bots set up to collect zero, uh, zero, 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 zero NFTs, uh, free NFTs. So, uh, yeah, it's inevitable that anytime you've got um, uh, an ecosystem like this that's semi-successful with, you know money changing hands and uh, lo lots of eyeballs on things you're going to get the inevitable wave of s exploiting scammers <laughs> right. and spammers moving in to uh, you know do what they do Copy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh, we're ready for it I mean you can't stop it uh, you can I guess just kind of take steps to minimize the impact on your own life because they're That's not. Right. That's right. Um, speaking of, do you have? Um, can I? Will you put in the private chat your Twitter handle so I can share oh, it sure. here for people? Let me, uh, grab it real quick. Hmm. Awesome. Thank you. I just passed 700 followers <laughs> after 13 years on Twitter. <laughs> hey, yo. All right. <laughs> now, is there anything? Um, what's behind the uh, Twitter handle? That's something I like to ask people because uh, it's it's always something interesting. Well, I've I should change mine. I'm not <laughs> terribly attached. Is it time to, to change? Is it, it time to change it? Probably time to change. It goes back to an old nickname that I was using on a World of Warcraft server, like a <laughs> lifetime ago. Ah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it was a shortened version of that, and uh, it's like you can't even get four letter. Twitter handles anymore, so I'm a little scared to let go of it. Like, what if I try to change it and then I can't? Like, I don't know. I end up like, I end up like Alex nine seven two one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that's just kind of this vestigial throwback to when I played WoW. The world of Warcraft. I I never I never did play, but. Uh... Man, I, I know a lot of people that did. Yeah, if I could just have all that time back. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm just like. Oh. Did, uh, did did you uh, did you meet uh, playing World of Warcraft? We didn't. Um, <laughs> we're we're gonna date ourselves if we tell you how we actually did meet. Uh, we met on a dial-up BBS. <laughs> oh. Um, in what well, must have been the early '90s. <laughs> Ninety-four, oh, maybe ish. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, was that uh, was that on Prodigy? 
network. So it was a local PBS, you know, in the town that we lived in, there was just um, a, a mutual friend of ours had a, like an Amiga 1200 plugged into the phone line. He was running some <laughs> BBS software on it. And um, people would just like, you know, it's a small town, not a lot to do. And it was kind of before the internet. So people would call these BBSs to get files and chat with each other and post messages. And so yeah, these are like, these are like the original, these are the original chat rooms, the bulletin boards. Yeah. That yeah, is cool. But- internet <laughs> yeah i mean the, the internet was around but it just wasn't really uh, people were using yeah. it yet. yeah <clears throat> that's great that's a cool story though <laughs> yeah. sharing, sharing mixtapes on uh floppy drives right. <laughs> i don't think you could do that actually yet no, no. no mp3 formats <laughs> we uh, tried at the time yeah right. um i think you could get like like maybe 15 seconds of highly compressed <laughs> quick time audio onto a floppy disk. Yeah, right. I remember my dad had an Amiga um, and I remember like me, him and my mom like coming into the den where he had the computer set up and he like had a, um, an audio program up and I remember hitting play and Thriller Michael Jackson's Thriller somehow was playing on the computer with synthesizers, and it was just like I don't, I've, I don't even know what was happening. It was magic. It's like how can this be? How can this be real life? We're living in the future. What does this mean for the future? Like, what does the future look like given this MIDI playback of Thriller coming out of the? Yeah, amazing. Uh, <laughs> Oh, and here we are now. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to uh, to to dis- to kind of cover or share? Uh, we we generally will spend like the first hour uh, talking and getting to know you, and then uh, we try to spend another uh, kind of the other half of the show browsing and exploring um, some of the marketplaces. So you're welcome to hang out and do that with us uh, with me. I talk, I say us a lot. Uh, I do have a co-host sometimes. Uh, it's the royal. But, uh, that's, that's right. Um, but yeah, if you guys, I, I don't want to, uh, I want to make sure you, you have time to share everything you want to share. Uh, I think we, we covered it. Yeah. You got anything? Oh, no. No? Okay. <laughs> I can go, but I won't. Well, um, I... This has been super fun. Did you, uh, do you want to hang out a little while and explore some stuff, or you have some things to do, or you let me know. Um, you know, we can hang out a little bit. I got to check on some work stuff, unfortunately. Uh, All right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we can hang out for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, and like I said earlier, for the um, for the chat. If you want to pick up the NFT that uh, Jess made exclusively for for us, um, you can check it out um, on Hicket Nunk. Uh, where did I go with it? Boop, 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 boop. It's somewhere here. <laughs> that's not it. Nope, nope, nope. That's not it. Not the one. Well. On the bottom of the screen, just DM me, uh, and I will send it to you. Or, um, or there it is, Pulse, object number four two two seven one. Can you believe it? That's like a lot of objects. They were just at ten k like a couple weeks ago. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I do have another one up there. It's I, I think I have object six five nine, and there's still like three editions left. I'm trying yeah. to get Alex to do more with the crypto art, but gradually, gradually. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Self promotion is exhausting. It's like, oh, I did that with a video game once and it was just like draining. It's really hard for me. I don't have the personality type for it. I totally understand. I, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I've, I've, 
I found that uh, personally, it's really difficult for me to share my own stuff or push my own stuff. But I love talking about other people's stuff. <laughs> so here we are. Like, this is a direct result of me not feeling really comfortable with sharing my own stuff. Like <laughs> you gotta, you gotta find uh, find where you fit, you know. So, uh, but don't undervalue yourself either. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's true. Right? That's true. Don't sell yourself short. That's right. That's right. Well, we look forward to seeing more of your stuff. Um, and you said it was uh, only point zero something tez, eh? <laughs> Where oh, would yeah. I find that object? <laughs> well, let me let me see. Um, where was it? It was like three. Is this it? And this is kind of uh, this was. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> um, you can get. Oh, go to. Uh, okay, yeah. Manage manage assets. Yeah. Yeah. Send it over because uh, one of the one of the things that uh, we want to make sure that we keep doing with the with the show is purchasing artwork. So that's like our other, our other aspect is we want to make sure that we're supporting the artists that we're um, interviewing, talking to. I hate calling it an interview because I, even though I try to ask things, like I'm a bartender, so I try to approach it from that that kind of you're across the bar, we're all hanging out uh, aspect as opposed to a personal. Uh, Give me all the juicy details. Um, yeah, this but, is just enough. Yeah. Um, ooh. And that's like accidental Hick at Nunk font. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what's the connection to Hick at Nunk? No. <laughs> well, the, there's this algorithm that you can use to make space invaders. You're basically just like splattering random pixels all over the place and then mirroring that so that it's like, it looks like a space invader. And if you make it small enough, three by three pixels, it looks just like the Hick at Nunk font. So <laughs> that is cool. Boom. Collecting it. Thank you. <laughs> <Ka -ching>. <laughs> <laughs> Drop that in there. Drop that little little bit. Oh great. And this was just kind of a a fun thing. We love we love Hick at Nunk and um, we, we think uh the the developers really like passionate about this project and it shows. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Uh, from, from day one, it was like, ah, oh, it was kind of a, a relief because you didn't know what was going to, what kind of platform was going to come out, you know, or. Um, they really did. A real, they did the yeah. minimum viable stuff at the very beginning. And then just gradually adding yeah. features that one day Mario got on Twitter and was like, Hey, Here's a free NFT on this site you've never heard of that barely works, <laughs> and it just took off. It just yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is cool. Uh, so, and one one other thing we try to do, I, I I've made it kind of a. Um, I realized I was collecting. I was like, okay, I'm gonna collect like stuff that I really like, stuff that you know, is just like, whatever up my alley, and I started to go through because I kind of do a recap blog where I'm posting like pictures and sharing the artists um, that, that I found. Um, and I started realizing a lot of them weren't verified. So we try to make sure that everyone's verified uh, that we're sharing because yeah, that copy minting, we got to try and we're trying to do our part in that. Yeah. Um, Just has been on me to <laughs> get verified to take a It's just an email and a a little verification thing you gotta go through. Yeah. I'll probably do that today. <laughs> it's in the collection now. It can't make us look bad. Right. right. That verification. No. <laughs> right. I am I yeah, am we do have the I, but we did personally talk, so I'm I'm positive this is you. <laughs> so I feel good about it either way. <laughs> um let's see here. This is uh ghosts, two little Ghosts and their different shapes by Pixo Crypto. I like, uh, I love little animations like this, uh, especially when they look hand drawn. If it is hand drawn, even better, I think. Um, I love that analog uh, digital combination. Um, I want to figure old, out. We're going to see what uh, 
without <laughs> I'm an old, old causing <laughs> So I'm gonna pull up your stream on my phone so we can see this. I don't want to cause like the the audio to go through the. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, That's such a big problem. <laughs> but there you are. Um, so the link uh, yeah. NF Trader NFT Raider. I keep saying that NF Trader. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry NFT Raider. Uh, he said that this is the link to. The video NFT mentioned. Oh. Video NFT. Oh, it's cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> video NFT. Mentioned. I love the the hand drawn look there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm an old like old school zine zine guy, so like anything that looks like you know, it was copy and pasted or actually was on a Xerox machine. I'm like, that's my jam right there. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my lady and I actually founded the uh, Las Vegas zine library. So we still kind of are involved in that, that world of zines and, and, uh, and tra uh, trading and stuff. And cool. very loosely at this point, it's kind of like, one of those projects that you love, but sits on the back burner and just exists. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, this, this is like vibe of like water damaged paper and little ghosts. Like that's, a, that's about my drawing level right there. Like, um, but you can see the edges of the Xerox scotch tape. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I didn't, I didn't know to use glue sticks yet. And uh, I, yeah, the entire the entire thing is just copy pasted uh, with yeah with scotch tape. That's right. <laughs> you know, you know. Okay, I'm bookmarking this one because even though it's not for sale yet, this is pretty fresh. So they might not have listed it yet. That's cool. Hopefully, I think it. Uh, we'll check for verification after. Um, Will you guys drop something for object for object? Um, NFT Raider is curious. Yeah, we want to definitely. We participated. No, just paid in the last one. It was great. Yeah. Uh, tell me, tell me about how it works. I mean, I get it. It's like one for one. But uh, how did you get involved? Because I I missed the last one, and I kind of caught the tail end of it. Um, but yeah, what's what's the whole process behind uh, participating? I just had seen somebody talking about it on Twitter, and I I hadn't heard about it either. And it was kind of last minute, and I'm like, oh well, I want to I want to be a part of this. <laughs> and and I just found out about this one like yesterday. I need to be in the loop more, I guess. But yeah. but I love it, and and getting more people interested and involved in the Tezos NFT world is is fantastic. Yeah, this is the thing to do it. Like Tezos scene has got this like playful, friendly vibe to it that the Ethereum scene used to have before like Ethereum gas prices became unmanageable. Like right. Like this is like we're still having fun here. We're still playing around. We're not like we're not people, we're not selling pieces for, <laughs> you know, thousands of dollars here. We're um it, it does have more of a like a small close knit community feel. I really like that. Hope we can hang on to that for yeah. as long as possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I hope so too. And you know, it's, yeah, it's one of those things like community, community growth in general can be difficult. Um, but if you have enough, I think if you have enough people, you know, sharing and talking and discussing and, um, I think that helps kind of steer uh, steer the community, you know, like you can, you're never going to have like the feeling you had, like when you discovered something beautiful and wonderful and unique, but if you keep being an active part of it, uh, you can have at least an influence over the direction the ship drifts. Uh, I think if that makes any sense. Yeah, totally. But it is hard when you're dealing with a space full of so much money. 
when something's based on a token of monetary, you know, like uh, value, like right. yeah. does value here. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, and then Tezos has got I don't totally understand it the technical side, but I guess some some protections against things going off the rails like Ethereum did. Sure. So hopefully yeah. they'll hang on for a little longer. Yeah, I was I was discussing that with uh, someone on a um, on a Discord uh, thing and. It, the question came up, what if Tezos jumps to being, you know, $800 per Tez or, you know, something like that, will the gas prices go up? And the answer was yes, technically, gas prices do increase with value. But the, the thing that Tezos um, has the ability to do is move very quickly towards, um, changes and adopt, adopting new, uh, changing its code essentially very quickly. And so, you know, finding solutions to those problems, if gas is becoming such an issue that the ecosystem itself can vote on it and, and make those changes quickly without having to, you know, it's like, more of a consensus thing as opposed to battling miners versus this or, you know, people. Fork. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know why, but I really like that photo. It's, it's a nice photo. angle. It's a good angle. Right? Good composition. Right. Nice colors too. Like the blue and like like the black has like a blue tint to it almost. Maybe it's because of the blue. I don't know. It's just something. And it's one Tez, which is uh, my top limit for how much I can spend. So before I buy it for the collection, let's check on it. It's got the it's, singles too, like on on an album cover where the, the artists are like back to back, like the light post. Yeah, is yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. I've got some other cool photos too. I'm going to hold off on buying it, but I'm going to bookmark it because yeah. not verified yet. I'm just going to wait and come back. It's good to see more photography in the NFT space. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Woo. Wow. Well, <laughs> trippy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so let's see if it's interactive. 3D, I, 3D stuff is definitely on the list for noise deck. Oh, cool. Heck yeah. You see the stuff that other people are doing, we're like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you got to lean away from the keyboard for a minute so you don't drool on it a little. <laughs> I love the 3D object collectibles where it's like the collectible is this little 3D object that you can just like spin around and like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of neat. That's cool. How do they do that? Right. That's the best art is when you're like, how do they do that? <laughs> right. <laughs> One of two collaborating artists. Huh. Let's see what else they got. AI graphics and generative visuals. Viju. Cool. Huh. Oh, yeah. Uh, t this I don't know what this is, but it reminded me of uh, what we were talking about earlier with um, bots. And somebody, I think it was Crip, uh, Martin from Crip, of Crypt Teams, uh, he said that his buddy had made an NFT that said, if this is in your, if, if you're seeing this in a person's collection, they have a bot that collects free NFTs. And he, so he had made it so that it shows up in everybody's gallery that's a bot. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's, a, that's, that's cool. That's <laughs> cool. Kind of a canary, canary warning. Canary, for, that's a good that's word. That's right. Yes. <laughs> canary code. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, it's okay. fun. It, like, again, seeing all these like different um, <laughs> solutions to to problems, um, creative solutions to problems. Or oh, here we go. Oh, uh, I love it. It's adorable. Uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Can we go? Uh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> is the time accurate? Is the time it is. Is it? It is. I think. Oh, it's a clock. It is a clock. It's 1041. 1141. I did not make that connection. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Peter J Javid. Peter J. No, see, I'm gonna mess it all up. I'm just <laughs> going for it. Peter Javidpour. All right, I tried. Oh yeah, I've seen. And I think I'm following him. Yeah, yeah, on Twitter. Welcome to my friends. Oh, nice. I think one of the other great things about this is just like recognizing people. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Like this uh, community that just gets more tightly knit and more tightly knit over time. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, oh my wow. God. Yes. <laughs> King, queen, regent. Yeah. Regent. Oh, so good. King of the pile. <laughs> um, oh yeah, my my wife's going to love that one. We, we've had some... Uh, We've had some rats in our house. We love and pet rats. Uh, we love our. Uh, we had a couple of hairless rats in our day. Oh, oh they were pretty <laughs> wonderful. I don't yeah, know we, if uh, you're yeah. animal lovers, but we talk about getting a pet. And if we were going to get a pet, it would probably be like a little rat or something. Yeah, they're so smart. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's wild. They, uh, you know, they. They have like their spot to, uh, they have their bathroom. You know, they always go there. Super trainable. It's they call, they come to their name. Like what? Oh. And they're like, they just horrible. Oh. oh, don't get me started. <laughs> oh no, I'll just this will turn into the hairless rat podcast right now. Like. <laughs> like the 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 way their skin feels on your on your cheek. Oh, oh, it's so sweet. And they have this little smell to them. Oh, oh. <laughs> but beware! Just when you're falling in love, that's their that's about their lifespan. Like when you know that you'll never live without them, that's when it's like two years, two and a half years, three years. But uh, I've read that about. It's a great yeah. it's a great short amount of time. And. Uh, I also read that, you know, in, in the wild, rats don't live that long. And they naturally, like, start to cons to succumb to these terrible diseases if they get too old. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is just a bummer. That's so it sad. Is. I don't know if I could deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we don't do it. <laughs> but, you know, guinea pigs, they, they are skinny pigs. I don't know <laughs> if you've seen any skinny pigs out there, but... They're pretty adorable, and they live a little longer. Yeah. So they're not as personable. That's cool. I think we saw this right when we were getting started. That's a trip. That's unique. It is. Elvira. I worked with a a woman uh, and she said it's Elvira. Elvira. <laughs> she, she would she would correct me anytime. <laughs> so, like, I, th I thought I thought it was Elvira. I don't know. Elvira. Okay. <laughs> El it is. <laughs> oh, I recognize I recognize uh recognize Danilo. Danilo Batista. Uh, photographer uh, I think we have one of his pieces in the collection, actually. Um, really cool. Like you said, it's really neat to recognize names and stuff of artists and, and be like, oh my gosh, so cool. Um, uh, Gorilla Sun, 
Hey, how's it going? Uh, by the way, uh, in the chat, uh, I didn't say hello to Citizen B. Um, people have been talking a little bit. Uh, Gorilla Sun says, I thought it was pretty neat that we could have 3D objects as the ob objects, the uh, Hicket Nunk, which I had some fun with at 31455. Let's check that object out. 31455. 455. Whoa, that's cool. That oh, is nice. Oh, cool. Nice, uh, nice, nice little P5JS sketch. Uh, have you, have either of you worked with PF or P5JS? Yeah, it's a funny story, actually. <laughs> oh. Noise, Noise Tech does use um, P5 under the hood, and uh, today it uses P5 under the hood. Uh, tomorrow it may not. Okay. <laughs> um, not, not the Python we, think on I, we think processing is amazing. We love it. Um, it but as a tool to help us build noise deck, I think we kind of we're bumping our heads against it a lot. So we're okay. It does a lot for you, but sometimes it tries to do a little bit too much for you Thank when you. you're trying to do things like load shaders or compile things on the fly. It can be a little difficult. Right. Um, I saw that there is processing for Python. Yeah. Is that, uh, have, have you messed around with that at all? Um, I, I haven't. I haven't. I want to. Just um, curious. It looks fun. No, I've, I've only. Uh, but P5, uh, P5JS, just for those that uh, don't know, uh, is a JavaScript library. Is that what it is? Right. Basically. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Processing the like the processing framework. I think natively it's uh, Java, right? And okay. it's, <clears throat> there's a people have just kind of spawned a bunch of different versions of it. Like there's the JavaScript one, the Python one, and probably other languages. Python or uh, processing is just so powerful. And when people ask me how they can get into programming generative art, that's why I tell them and just like check out processing. It's so good. Yeah. Um, it's been around for a while. It's it's mature. Um, like I was messing with processing like uh, I don't think <laughs> quite 10 years ago, but almost 10 years ago. And it was um, it was awesome then. It's awesome now. And it's uh, it's a great tool. People are doing amazing stuff with it. Well, it's yeah. Tutorials and documentation. And so it's a good friendly place for new people to get started with generative art. Yeah, and like um, the stuff people are doing, like bees and bombs, that kind of stuff is just wow. Um, what is it, bees and bombs? Yeah, um, have you seen bees and bombs, uh, AKA Dave on Twitter? <laughs> um, uh, he's just a generative artist doing cool stuff with processing. Nice. Yeah. yeah, shoot over a quick link if you can in the private chat. Like, yeah, I can. It in the book, bookmarks. Um, uh, Gorilla Sun says, Whoa, also, I'm a big fan of you guys and Noise Deck. I often mess around with it when I'm bored. Thank you. Gorilla Sun, get the pro version. It's time. <laughs> it's time to level up. No, that's awesome. You got, you got, it's, it's so cool that, um, like, again, I think such a useful tool and it's so fun to mess around with i keep coming back to it too bees and bombs dave is my name i make gifts take a commission <laughs> they just um they, they just come to mind when we're talking about processing but there are i don't want to yeah. exclude all the other awesome processing artists that are showing up on my wall every day <clears throat> sure there's just like so many And they really, uh, like processing, I think, that's where like the idea of the sketch kind of came from. Like, this is my sketch. It's like this living thing that's animated. And uh, I think that's a really cool paradigm. Right, and that's uh, exclusive to, um, I, I, I noticed that. And for 
for people uh, who are watching, um, processing is its own language, right? Uh, so like you have like Python, you have like JavaScript, and then there's like processing. Well, it's like an API. It's like a, it's a, it's a library, and they, I think they try to make it as as close, like as similar as possible across the different languages. So like when you're using processing, you're using processing in this language, but there's probably gotcha. little differences between the different languages. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so if, yeah, if you're looking to get into, uh, into generative art or deeper into it, uh, that's a good place to start. Take it from the pros. <laughs> the accessible pros. <laughs> Learn from our mistakes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> we're, we're really pushing the limits of what you can do with I feel with uh, JavaScript and just WebGL, real time. yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> a really complex application to be. But. Yeah, I think at some point we're gonna hit the limit, and we'll need to probably move out of the web browser, and that'll be a sad day. But we'll see. Well, yeah, we'll see. You get a lot more power using, I don't know, a desktop. Yeah. Like we've talked about using something like Unity to make a standalone application that would be a little bit more powerful. Maybe uh -huh. uh, we're, we're worried about the web browser's ability to do some things. Like for VJ performance, um, it might be like maybe the audio input is not where it should be if you're going through a browser, or uh, we don't know. We don't know what the issues are going to be. But sure, when you're in a browser, you're just limited by the browser. Right. I don't know how I got on that tangent. But. No, that's it's true. <laughs> um, NFT Raider would like to gift an Easter egg um, to Alex. Oh, goodness. Would you be interested in that? Doesn't want to send an NFT unsolicited. So we have a preview of the object. Um, it's going to be not this one that we're seeing on the screen, but... Let's see, two, three, four, nine, five. Two, three, four, nine, five. Literally an Easter egg. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, my wallet address uh, is should be uh, on that one object that we linked. Yes. Or I can try to copy it. it says <laughs> NFT Raider is going to send it your way. OK, thank you. Ooh. I appreciate it. Those eggs are beautiful. Yeah, right? I, I know. I saw those two earlier, uh, NFT Raider. Um, and you know what? Actually, that reminds me. I think I was going to buy one for the collection <laughs> because NFT Raider has been uh, has been hanging out in our chats and been a nice, a great supporter. So, pretty sure I got his egg in here somewhere. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. Boom. Cool. Consider it blocked. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask. Uh, Talking about the the generative art and the uh, noise deck, um, and just what you both uh, do in general, have you in the past, or are you working with uh, any musicians, or um, have any uh, noise projects, uh, audio wise, uh, of your own? Oh, um, I've made some music. Uh, that I don't really want to pimp too bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, there's one person who, uh, they're, they're a musician. The, well, I don't know if they identify as a musician, but they make music. <laughs> and yeah. they, they, a few months ago, well, probably like four or five months ago, before we even had Noise Night, they had asked me to um, collaborate with them on like a music video. I was like, I'm excited about it, but my tools at the time weren't very good, like, for real time stuff. Like um, I have this other project called Noise Maker 
and okay, it does cool stuff, but it's slow. <laughs> it's really slow. <laughs> and, um, so so doing like any kind of audio reactive stuff with it just wasn't going to happen. Um, but now that we have noise deck, uh, I think it's uh, yeah, I could see us using it to make music videos at some point. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, do you have uh, do you have any audio projects? I don't. I have done generative uh, kind of. I guess you could call it music. <laughs> I don't know how much I would want to listen to. Or, or, audio audio experiments or um, forays into the audio sphere. <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've done a little. I, I don't have like a formal musical background, so uh, I'm kind of just. Uh, it's more mathy than it is listenable. <laughs> So, uh, so would you would you say even that it, maybe it's algo rave? Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> that would, that would be kind. That would be kind way. <laughs> that was uh, that's definitely um, that's that's some stuff I I've discovered uh, in the last six months or so. Is that uh, another aspect of creative coding with uh, like super collider is one. Uh, language I've I've dipped into a little bit and um, uh, what's another one uh, title I think is another one that's uh, pretty I've seen I've seen a lot of stuff being made with and I've dipped my toes in but it's like everything I, I've got I've got um, I've got 10 fingers but I've only I've got 25 pieces of pie and I'm just kind of <laughs> keep like I get, it gets messy sometimes, but <laughs> we're, we're trying to take the intro, you know, we're, we're trying to take it easy with this intro because like noise deck for, for what it is, it's cool. And for the, the core audience of people who are using it right now, it, it works well. But as soon as we get into something like uh, audio reactive stuff, some people are going to go into it with really specific expectations of how the app should work. And if it doesn't okay. that way, they're going to be like, this disappointed. Sucks. Yeah, they're, they're disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we want to we want to do whatever it is that we're doing really well, and maybe that means at some point in the future, Noise Deck will become multiple apps that are meant for specific purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Like the VJ. Okay, yeah. That's really cool too, and I mean, at least it, I think it. It sounds like. Um, you both have enough experience in the space to kind of know how a launch can go and things to kind of be prepared for um, before releasing something uh, into the wild, as it were. Because I think a lot of people might not even consider that, you know, just kind of put it out there. And then you have like kind of some backlash of, I wanted it to do this specifically, but you're giving it, you're giving people a tool and you've got to consider all the ways they'll hold the tool. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've been learning a, a bit about that, how to manage like a product rollout. And it's not always obvious. Like the, the impulse is that you want this to be as useful to as many people as possible. But um, if you don't like provide a narrow definition and like a narrow category of what your thing is, other yeah. people will do it for you. And it might not be the category you want to be in. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> so I think we want to... Uh, yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. I, I, st I stopped on this because uh, I was wondering if it was an actual, like a full magazine uh, that had been minted. But it is the magazine cover, um, which then links me back to, again, my uh, growing up, Again, always having a computer in the house. I remember being like 15 and my dad bringing over a Corel Draw <laughs> and plugging it in. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is oh, it. Yeah. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a magazine. I'm going to like do so much cool stuff. And uh, I got about as far as the magazine cover and that was the end of it, but it was cool to make. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, my so. first computers was uh, doing graphic design for a boss who was too cheap to spring for Adobe products. So I, we had a Corel photo paint and Corel draw, and it was yeah. I, I quite adept at them. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> they're still around, right? I think. I think so. The Corel. I think they're okay products. They're just like not as popular as Adobe stuff. Yeah. End user dithered. What is dithering? Jess <laughs> is into dithering. Jess is like, oh, it's dithered. It says yeah. right, right now it's her. It's yes. her jam. Tell, tell me about dithering. What is dithering that is uh, happening here? Well, end user dithered is the title of this piece. So you you would be replacing maybe the, the brightness of the image with a, a pattern. And this, this goes back to the days when monitors were one bit and you had black and white and those were your only colors. Fake multiple colors by using patterns that, that kind of trick the eye into thinking they're a different color. So you kind of like stipple, you, you, you mix some black dots in with the white and as there are more <laughs> black dots, it looks darker. And um, I feel this look gotcha. is really appealing to me right now. This is like, I would love to have that in noise deck. The ability for yeah, it's 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 somehow timeless. Even though it like evokes this period of time when monitor displays were one bit, um, it it's got this like look that just like it's it's classic. Yeah, it's a classic look. And maybe uh, maybe it's an '80s kids thing or a '90s kids thing, whatever. But this immediate like that look also uh, evokes like carnival, like, oh my gosh, they're printing my face on a t-shirt. And <laughs> yeah. it's like that black and white, like you can still see some lines in it. Um, but I guess that's dithering, right? They, that's probably how they did that kind of printing back then. Some yeah, kind totally. of dithering process. Our printers were one color, our monitors were one color. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a different time and we had to be creative with how we represented things. That's right. That's a really cool image. And, uh, the Wikipedia article on dithering, I just want to put that out there, has got, uh, it's very informative and it talks about the different types of dithering and the different patterns that you can use. No, I don't know if I've read that. And it's over my head. It's like, <laughs> we don't have dithering because it's like over my head. It's like, it's over our head. <laughs> um, there's probably some simple, some, some more simple ways to implement dithering, but we want, we want, the full taco, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the full taco. A half taco will not do. <laughs> I am going to, here we go. We have a banner with the Wikipedia article. All for right. Dithering. <laughs> dithering. <laughs> um, Oh, that's neat. Dithering. Dithering sounds like I'm thinking maybe it's this image, but dithering sounds like darning your socks. Like you're, you got to <laughs> ring out. You got to dither those, dither your socks when they've gotten wet. I don't. Yeah, it's something that they did back during the depression or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this guy. I, uh, have you seen this uh, this particular artist? This guy. Oh, I love his stuff. Oh, yeah. We were just looking at this. Yeah. That's cool. Little, these little potato looking guys, they're so adorable. Yeah. The, the other yeah. Day, uh, just like came, came across the room with her phone. She's like, look at this. Yeah. It was, it was this <laughs> the, the little burning guy that just like comes out, incinerates, like, incinerates and that's just like, yeah. <laughs> so red. And it's all with oil paint, I guess. Uh, is that it's like an animation uh, with oil paint originally? Um, oh, okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to switch over. I like to look a little bit at um, some Calament, see how they're developing. Um, so I'm just gonna head over to Calament, see how, see what improvements they've made. I don't. Do you guys spend uh, any time on Calament? We were following its release. I, I was yep. there on launch day. I put two, I listed two pieces on there. They haven't sold yet, but I set the price kind of high. So that really limiting who would be able and willing to, to get them. Sure. Um, oh, that's, you know what? I think I remember, uh, that's right. I think again, Jess, you were one of the first artists I followed on Twitter uh, when I started my feed and I was like, 
Ooh, yes. <laughs> doing the damn thing. Great. Doing the damn thing. It's great. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like to check back in because I was following following the release and kind of you know follow the Discord chat. Um, the one thing that I will say that they continue to fail on dark mode. That's it. That's my only. That's my only major criticism. I'm I'm just a dark mode junkie. So uh, yeah. what can I say? Uh, that's that's my only major criticism. I don't like to uh, level any uh, judgments out there. Uh, I let other people do what they will. But uh, that one, Calament, I'm looking at you. <laughs> dark mode. We need dark it. Dark mode. We need it. Uh, but they're doing a really cool um, the Pangea Seed project. Uh, during this week, uh, fundraiser with a group called Pangea Seed Foundation. So again, tying in the clean NFTs um, to raise money for the Pangea Seed Foundation, um, which is like an er you know earth-friendly organization. I forget exactly what it was. I looked it up last week and covered a little bit of it, but um, good to see uh, these organizations getting involved with uh, kind of nonprofit uh, work. So hopefully, that, and pairing, probably bringing in some new artists to the space too to to generate that interest. Clean oh. NFTs. That's nice. Another thing, I I w I really want to be able to get these bigger. Uh, you know, I want to like see them by themselves, or at least erase the rest of the screen and focus in on the the like, art. It's uh, full screen mode. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, but that's really pretty. Cosmic Bliss, I've seen them them before. I know they do a lot of work towards uh, verification and stuff. So you know, uh, that's a big part of the platform that you can definitely appreciate. Uh, oh, that's right. This is the drop. I don't think this was up yet. Drop. Um, additions for oceans. Claire Droppert. Uh, see, that's I, I. There's so much detail in that piece. Uh, I just want to like. I gotta, <laughs> gotta get it. <laughs> I love the super detailed pieces where the artist will like post it and like it's it's just like so detailed and so large that they have to post like here's this part of it, here's this part of it, here's this part of it. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, and you get, really get to appreciate the detail. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, Claire Dropper, artist statement. Uh, the trademark in my work has a focus on serenity, simplicity, and silence. I'm drawn to desolate spaces and landscapes, and with a minimalistic approach, my aim is to capture the essence of natural elements in a unique way. Photography gives me the opportunity to share my thoughts and stories with the world. Um, my images always tell a story, and this hopefully gives greater meaning to the work I create. Um, She does some photography. This is not one of her photographs, but it talks a lot about photography. Beautiful piece. It so is. Hopefully it's not mixed up with someone else. <laughs> I don't think, I'm pretty sure that's not a photograph. I mean, it might have the, I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at. It's too small. I can't, I can't tell. <laughs> it's beautiful nonetheless. Claire, good job. <laughs> Bookmarked. That's like, uh, what's that, Schoolhouse Rock kind of song? <laughs> totally. <laughs> right.
Coming Together by Steph Edwards. That's pretty cool. Tentacles and snakes. Whoa. Yeah, that'll bring you together. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fire and water. Jess and Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Have you uh, have you guys seen any of the the second? Have you seen anything go to secondary markets or anything like that yet? Uh, as far as the art goes, just had some secondary sales. I have. I've had a, a handful of secondary sales on on Hick and Nog. How does that? Um, it you and did you know that by just showing up in your wallet and kind of tracking it down or? Uh, yeah. I mean, I that. <laughs> there is a little detective work involved when you get these payments. It's like, where did it come from? What was it for? Well, yeah, and then figuring out where it came from, like what piece it was for. Is I'm still not 100 percent sure of that, but but I can at least see when I'm getting the secondary sale payments. There's probably room for someone who's good with blockchain type stuff <laughs> to write a really good like a like a gallery type thing for your wallet or something. Oh, I should do that. But, you know, too many, too many projects, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right. If so only so many are there. there. There are so many things I would love to do if I had the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Time management is like a skill in of itself. It is true. Nice. I love the look. Good colors. Right. I've been watching a lot of, um, there's a show called Alone. And uh, yeah, it's like people, you know, dropped off in the wilderness and they have to fend for themselves or whatever. And oh. uh, it's pretty, it can be pretty intense, but there's a lot of beautiful landscape. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm just, maybe it's, I don't know, I'm overthinking it. I'm too caffeinated. I'm like, am I just drawn to this like ocean work? And then all of a sudden it clicks, it's Earth Day, and I'm looking at a collection that's based around uh, the ocean. So no, it's <laughs> too much coffee. Too much coffee. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, let's go back real quick to the explore. I wanna try just like a couple more. I th my eyes get burnt out so quick. Yeah, these pixels are bright. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's great though, like seeing like all, like just on all, on both platforms, seeing all of the different styles and it's just such a, a mishmash of uh, different work and different, like some of it can be just really straightforward, very basic, but beautiful. And then other stuff is, you know, has a lot of nuance or technique and it's just really interesting. Well, how can you talk Mr. Anderson if you don't have <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Creator Sasquatch. For who were they, the blind and the ignorant, to speak of such beauty that would never be seen? <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Um, <laughs> another thing we've uh, we've seen some of is some poetry and stuff. Um, so that's kind of cool to see again, you know, there's so many different applications uh, in this space that you can have kind of poetry mixed in with artwork, mixed in with music, mixed in with video, kind of all in the same uh, space is nice. Yeah. For, for me anyway, like I, I, 
I like all those things. So, well, everyone's got this creative spark somewhere. Yeah, and I don't know if it's the pandemic or what, but <laughs> people are getting creative, and there's so yep. much, there's just so much good stuff. Absolutely, you know, and that's like uh, when I've when I talk about like zines and stuff, uh, I feel like zines and the like hick at nunk NFT space um, have like a very similar um, power in that like zines allow people to feel empowered and to share their work without having to, you know, worry about being self-conscious about, um, you know, like, Oh, is my, is the editor going to think it's worth publishing or, you know, am I good enough as a writer to share this? Or is my photograph cool enough? Like, there's all these things that, that we put pressure on and focus on in like the professional world, um, or that we see as like successful marks of a creative person and zines kind of like strip all that away and allow you to just like, I made it and therefore it's worth something. Here you go. I hope you enjoy it. Like it, it allows for that kind of freedom that uh that we need like especially in certain times of our lives like and i think like that uh that same vibe is going on with thicket nunk where um there's this kind of openness like you were talking about earlier that's like welcoming and like who cares like what it is if you're doing it it's worthwhile like Great. bar none mm. and there's a place for it and some somewhere like calament is there's a place for calament too because there are there are people who they don't want to go to the open mic night and uh listen to the first half of the open mic night to get to the one thing that they really came for which was their friend when they could just go and see their friend like if that makes sense uh right it, the curated space has a very this it has its own purpose um but the uncurated and open space is very important uh, for growth too. So that's yeah, totally agree. Yeah, yeah. It's um, there. There's got to be some kind of middle ground that maybe we haven't found it yet. But uh, but between these sites like Super Rare that you have to be invited to, and the sites like Rare Roll where the floodgates are open and it's. Um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, um, maybe just like mm. what a, verifying the artists is probably the middle ground there. Mm. Right. Well, that's cool. Yeah, this one's got sound. I'm going to throw the sound on real quick. Ooh. Hopefully it won't blast us all out. But <laughs> and this is called, um, and God said, let there be light because sound was already working. <laughs> oh. Oh, a little glitchy on my side evens out even out there we go that's cool it's beautiful yeah and it's full screen that's nice you would look you would look perfectly at home in a one of those digital photo frames mm -hmm. oh, that's cool i like that a lot that's neat um that's the one thing we uh we gotta do um I definitely want to start organizing like I one thing about again doing this is meeting so many people and seeing so much art and it um getting like a good a cool art show going of like you know just like quarterly art gathering of different people and um seeing more of that going on I really I really want to organize something like that to again give give people more places to share their work and and meet each other um eventually got to get it into a gallery you know <clears throat> do some in-person in stuff would be so cool 
uh, just like or people from all over the world, and yeah, I don't know. Get some screens donated and installations in, and <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool. Oh man, it's hard hard to imagine such a world. Yeah, right. <laughs> what is this strange world with uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller playing on an Amiga computer? <laughs> and what will the future be like? <laughs> People going places and doing things. It's unheard of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gosh, yeah. It's, man. It's, it's been strange uh, being in, in this city uh, and in the service industry at uh, it's it boggles my mind every day <laughs> but <sighs> well, that's cool. yeah right so many people are out and about right now and have been for a while here in vegas and it just blows my mind yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need one of those swarms of grasshoppers or something <laughs> yeah. that'll, that'll keep right. people in we do get a lot of cicadas here. Cicadas, that's what I was thinking of, yeah. Oh, yeah. We need this thing to come through, scare people back <laughs> indoors. <laughs> it, can, uh, it can do the zip tie down the strip. <laughs> yes, there we go. <laughs> or the zip line. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, there's so much, like... So much raw talent on display. It's true. Mm -hmm. Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh. <laughs> oh my God, this is funny. Oh, speaking of thriller. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness. I can even like hear the music. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Wow, it's got that look like th those old Sega games where they were trying to be realistic. <laughs> yeah. The title is Diet Pepsi. Oh, it's got <laughs> Diet Pepsi in there. I need to see that. <laughs> or uh, Coke or New Coke. What was it? <laughs> Pepsi Clear. Official. <laughs> yeah. Let's say NFT. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that little guy's cool. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Make your mark, little guy. <laughs> That's right. That's a peeper is what it's called. Let's go. <laughs> Yoshi Sodioka, an artist based in New York City. And he's got a little peeper. Love it. Yeah, I'm just starting to uh, get into some, a little bit of uh, Python web development now. Uh, I've been taking this this course and uh, following it along, and we're in this like web module. So I'm excited to learn more about like building websites and stuff. Even though that's not kind of where I'm primarily drawn, it's nice to. Uh, uh, it'll be good for projects like the Artcast, where right now I'm using Tumblr, and it's driving me nuts that <laughs> I can't upload certain file file formats. So it's like some GIFs will work when I repost them, some don't. So I have to take like a picture, a snapshot of a, a piece of generative art, and it's like it just doesn't do it justice. But uh, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, Python's a good language to start with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do uh, Python at work. Okay. I uh, yeah I I've I went from a kitchen talk about Bitcoin during a holiday party. And then I was like, wow, what is Bitcoin? Oh my gosh, this is crazy, but I don't understand any of it, but I want to put money into it, but I don't understand any of it. What can I do? Oh, I'll just learn a programming language. That'll solve everything. And then I'm like, I love Monty Python. Python is named after Monty Python. This is amazing. 
and then got further down the rabbit hole and I was like, I probably would have been better off learning JavaScript for a lot of the web based stuff that blockchain deals with, but I'm already, I'm already uh, committed to Python. So I'm, I'm in, so <laughs> I'm a year into that journey and uh, it's, it's fun. It's interesting. Yeah, like Python, it's a for for all of its idiosyncrasies, it's a it's a fun little language. And and you know, I think uh, and now that I know more about, um, I think just learning a language. Period. Now I look at other languages, and I'm I'm at least sometimes able to see kind of what's going on, or like understand them a little bit easier now. Um, not it's proficient so by any means, but you just kind of start to see the patterns and how things are made and. Yeah. yeah, Python in particular is, I just wish it wasn't so slow because it's so expressive and doing like generative art stuff in it is a blast. Like you can have, you can cram so much functionality into this little like tiny little block of code that just does something amazing. Downside is it's right. just forever to do it. <laughs> um, well, it looks like this is the, uh... The two hour mark, we kind of try to cut it off around now, but, um, and this piece is a nice piece to go out on. It's changing on us a lot. So that's a nice that's background cool. color. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you both for coming on. Jess, Alex, so good to meet you both. And uh, I'm so, I'm looking forward to upgrading my noise deck to pro. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm probably going to go annual um to, to start as a subscription process and uh see how it does because yeah i'm I, again super accessible and really freaking cool um thank you so thank you for creating it and uh thanks for agreeing to to hang out and i hope uh i hope you enjoyed yourselves and definitely hope to, hope to have you back sometime cool thank you yeah, thanks for having us yep Absolutely. Thank you. And to the chat, thank you all for hanging out. We will post a recap in the next couple of days and um, post the video. And we will see you next week. All right. Bye. Thanks. Woo. Bye-bye. Yep.